Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you so much for choosing to spend a little time with us in viewing our Thursday night Bible study. And it's my prayer that you will allow God's word to order your steps to a peaceful and joyful future. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to learn to accept your chastisements uh, so that we can appreciate the joy that you provide through correction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our subject for tonight is nighttime sorrow uh, and daytime joy. Nighttime sorrow and uh, daytime joy. The idea uh, behind this, uh, what I'm trying to convey is uh, kind of like when you look at nighttime, it's darkness or sorrow. But then after nighttime comes daytime. Nighttime transitions into daytime, uh, daytime joy or light. Uh, it's difficult to walk in darkness, but if you learn to, to stick with the light, then you will have much joy. But if you hang out in the dark, sorrow will uh, discover you there and hang out with you. Uh, our uh, text for tonight is one that's for very familiar. I suggest or recommend that you read uh, Psalms 30, verse 1 through 12, but we're only going to read uh, verse 5, a uh, very familiar uh, scripture. And uh, But to have a fuller understanding, I recommend verse 1 through 12. Verse 5 says, For his anger is but for a moment and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may endure or tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. The more and more that I read God's word, the more I'm learning that whenever you see the word but, most of the time, it's an indication that God is getting ready to change things. He's getting ready to tr transform uh, you or to make things different in your life. And in this case, he's talking about light, darkness to light. He's talking about sorrows to joy. And, 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 and we all go through these times when uh, we, we, we go through periods of sorrow. But then uh, my philosophy is always outlast the bad and joy will come in the morning. Uh, Again, our subject is nighttime sorrow and daytime joy. Joy comes with the morning is a psalm of Davis, David. Uh, and uh, have you ever been through what seems like hell, purity hell, when you finally made it to the Lord's house, joy showed up? You know, you, when you have a hard time on the job all week long, when you have a hard time at w home all, all week long, it seems like you're going just catching through hell. If it ain't one thing, it's another. And when you can finally make it to the Lord's house on Thursday night or Wednesday night, whenever your Bible study might be, or on Sunday morning, that's when you have your breakthrough. You, you might have been going through all kinds of hell and not having any kind of joy, or any kind of peace. But on Sunday morning, things change simply because you feel that you are closer to the Lord. It's as though we can then say, I still have joy. For some of us, uh, it's uh, something about being in the Lord's house that changes our outlook on our situations, or at least for a little while. Each of us lives uh, lives that are filled with times of darkness. Darkness can come in many forms. Darkness can come because of a death of a, a friend or a loved one. Death can come uh, from the unexpected, uh, things that just come out of nowhere. Darkness can come when you meet with an unplanned accident. Darkness can come when you are informed that the company you've been employed for at for years uh, will soon be shutting the doors. 
Darkness can come when, when the, the largest company in a small town is ro relocating and all of a sudden darkness can affect the whole town. Darkness can come when sickness turns uh, our lives upside down. But one good thing about darkness is that the, the things that darkness is associated with in, it, 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 is that we who serve the Lord, it will be transformed into light. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, we know that all things, not some things, not most things, not a few things, but we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. God has a plan and a purpose for each of our lives, and it is to do us good and not harm. To have, he has planned for us to have a, a good future. But... Thanks be to God that those dark times do not last always. Grandmama used to say, I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. You might remember Joseph when his father made him a coat of many colors and that brought uh, on the jealousy and envy of his brothers. His dreams even set the whole family against him. When the Lord's favor uh, you with his blessings, it can cause even those close to you to hate you and hate you even that much more. Uh, back in the uh, uh, 80s, early 80s, there was a guy, a uh, secular music uh, uh, performer by the name of Richard Dimplefield. Some of you might remember him. He, he uh, was an R&B singer and he did a song titled, If It Ain't One Thing, It's Another. He said, I'm making this song for all the people who at times in their lives feel bad, go through some things. He said, you know when you feel like even your blues have the blues. <laughs> oh, Lord, that's feeling bad. That's dark time. If we would just keep the faith like Joseph did, then the day uh, of light that symbolized for joy will come. Sorrow brings the opposite acceptance of joy. Uh, sorrow can bring uh, down feelings, a hurt, a broken heart. Sorrow can bring worry and and discomfort with your life. Sorrow can bring doubt and, and a loss of hope, if not all hope in your life. But joy says that there's a brighter day, a dawning. And I'm, I plan on being around for that brighter day. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, you know it, comes in the morning. Most, if not all of us, would prefer joy over sorrow at any given time. Even though there are those who become accustomed to misery as long as they have company. No one becomes accustomed to sorrow. It's difficult to accept defeat or failures or injuries or and so on. None, none of us will become used to the sorrow that comes with losses in life of someone near and dear to us, a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, a close friend. I, I remember uh, a few years back, I was on vacation, was visiting my son in uh, uh, Maryland, and I got two phone calls, one one day, uh, about uh, one o'clock and the next one, or maybe two days later, early in the morning. And uh, one was, the first one was the death of a really close friend, high school friend. We had gone through life together. We used to play basketball at his house in the afternoon after school. 
Uh, we played baseball together. We joked together. We laughed together. We had good times together. Uh, but and then the, the, a few days later, got a phone call that a young fellow that had so much uh, going for him in life that was uh, that was a, a good friend of, 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 of our family. I can remember sitting down talking to him one night and uh, uh we just had a good conversation about his outlook for the future. And I said, this young man is going somewhere. He has a bright outlook for his future and it's positive. And, and, and then all of a sudden I get a phone call that he was gone. Uh, that was unexpected sorrow. And, and, and unexpected sorrow can hurt. Uh, just about as bad as any kind of sorrow. Most likely, you looked for uh, something that you lost. And I'm not talking about a, a loved one or close friends that, that passed. But uh, perhaps you lost an object or something that was very important to you. And you look for it feverishly expecting to find it like the lady in the parable of the lost coin did. A new day brings new opportunities instead of another opportunity to be sad and sorrowful. Look at life as each new day brings an opportunity for a fresh start and another chance at life another opportunity to do it over. This is another Thursday night for me to do it again, to try and be better and better. It's an opportunity. A new day announces the end of night or what you've been going through or dark time in our lives. There is a transition from night to morning as stated in verse four and five of the 30th number of Psalms. The Psalms is not only David's personal expression of, of, of praise and thanksgiving, but it was also used by the congregation in worship. And here David addresses them. Joy should not be a selfish act, but a personal joy should lead to a co corporate joy. Joy should be contagious. Have you ever noticed how difficult it is to have joy that does not uh, uh, call for you to share it with somebody? You got some good news and, and you said to yourself, I ain't going to tell nobody about this. I'm going to keep this to myself. But then it kept getting feeling better and better. And, and, and you said that even though I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, I just can't keep it to myself. When we come together for corporate worship and praise, it should be a sharing process. We should join together in sharing the joy that the Lord has given us a chance to be in the number one more time. Joy should give us an occasion to gather to share the goodness of the Lord. Psalms 34 verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man or woman who takes refuge in him. And then, oh, magnify the Lord with me cooperately and let us exalt his name together. Personal worship that doesn't enrich our cooperate worship may become selfish and lead to more and more pride. When our personal intentions in worship is to impress somebody, our personal worship will be selfish and full of pride. The contrast between verse 5 uh, uh, shows us that the motivation for David's praise, it says, for, uh, uh, from God's anger to God's favor, from chastisement for, that will last only for a moment to a lifetime of his grace. My grandmother used to tear my behind up when I was a child. 
And my mother, I can't remember her whooping me but one time. But that one time was enough for a lifetime. <laughs> but then that, that what, what I'm trying to say is those whippings only last just a little while. And then before you know it, I was out in the yard playing, having fun uh, before long. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 7 through 8 says, From a night of weeping to a morning of joy. And then Isaiah chapter 54, verse 7, uh, uh, let's see, verse 7 and 8 says, For a brief moment I, I deserted you. And I believe this is God talking to Isaiah. For a brief moment I deserted you, but with great compassion I will gather you. And then verse 8 says, In overflowing anger for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you said the Lord, your Redeemer. For David, this was the dawning of a new day after a painful time of suffering in his life that had been a time of darkness. Each morning with God's mercy are new. As Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 and 23 says, God's mercy is brand new every morning and God's special help often arrives in the morning. Hallelujah. Uh, let's see, where was I then? Lamentation uh, chapter three. Let's read, let's read a little of uh, those, th those uh, two verses. Lamentation chapter three, verse 22 and 23 in its entirety. It, verse 22 says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. And this is the English Standard Version. And verse 23 says, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Weeping comes into our lives as a guest visiting. But God's gracious favor is with us for a lifetime. You know how it is. Uh, uh, if a person is a guest in your house, you don't expect them to stay always. You, you expect them to, to have an end point when they come in or a leaving point. M my youngest son used to have a bad habit. and we, It took a long time. I don't know if we ever broke him of it, but somebody come to visit, he, his, his question always was, uh, when are you going home? <laughs> And, 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 and that's, that, that's okay for guests. You shouldn't expect them to stay, to move in. But God's grace and mercy, that's what you want to move in. Joseph, getting back to him just briefly, reached a point in his life when he was able to say to his brothers that grew to hate him more and more. He said to them in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, as for you, you meant what you were doing to me uh, uh, for evil. But, that is the, that is word is again, but God is getting ready. And God will turn things that people are doing to you around. As for you, you meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. God always has a good purpose for allowing suffering and sorrow to invade our joy for a little while. Romans chapter five, verse three says, not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering. And that's a place that, that, that every believer, every follower of Jesus Christ must get to, that you rejoice in suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance. God has a purpose. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And then first, um, second Corinthians, rather, chapter four, verse 15 says, for it is all for your sake, 
so that grace extends to more and more people in, 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 in it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. The, have you ever thought about the fact that 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 the, the the more grace God extends to you, the more he expects you to extend to others, the more he forgives us, the more he expects us to keep passing it on and teaching uh, generations after generation, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must forgive others, even your enemies. Do good to those that despitefully use you. And, and then uh, uh, verse uh, 16 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says, so we do not lose heart. We don't give up. We don't throw in the towel. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. And as we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen are transient. But the, th the, the, in other words, just for a little while. But the things that are unseen are eternal. As Jesus explained to his disciples, God doesn't replace sorrow with joy. He transforms sorrow into joy. If I was at Mount Sinai now, I'd say, can I get a witness? Jesus taught his disciples, and, and, and we are all followers of Jesus Christ. We are all his disciples. We are learners of Jesus Christ. God doesn't replace sorrow with joy. He transforms sorrow into joy. Hallelujah. John chapter 16, verse 20 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because uh, her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish and the pain for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Verse 22 said, so also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, Jesus is telling his disciples, and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. Woo-wee. No one will take your joy from you. The same baby that caused the mother pain also brings that same mother joy. The death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on Friday, one Friday, years and years ago, brought darkness and it brought sorrow. It was very dark during the daytime. His disciples reverted back to their former lives without hope. But early the third day morning, Jesus rose with all power in his hand. He rose from the grave. And even in these days of COVID-19 darkness, we can be confident that joy will soon come if we faint not, if we don't give up. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up on wings uh, as eagles. They shall run and shall not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Matthew chapter 28 verse 1 says, uh, remind, It reminds us that the resurrection of Jesus Christ brought the dawning of a new day for all who trust in him. And I'm glad today. Each day I wake up to a brand new day, I say, thank you, Lord. 
He didn't have to do it, but he did. And he has a purpose for giving us another chance. And we ought to seek his direction on, Lord, don't help me with what I want to do today, but show me what you want me to do today. And then you do it through me. And you'll find that nothing and no one or the lack of nothing or, the, or, or, or nothing that happens unexplainably or, or unplanned will be able to take your joy from you. That's all I got for tonight. Uh, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for being our joy that makes all of our sorrows worthwhile. In the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Uh, even though for a little while, until we learn to appreciate joy, it appears that sorrow, the sorrow of COVID-19 is going to be a while longer with us. So wear a mask. I was talking to a gentleman today and he said, uh, these masks might be a thing of the future. They might not ever go away. So whatever you have to do day by day to stay safe and to help others to be safe, don't be selfish. Do it. Wear a mask, practice social distancing, and wash your hands often. And the God of grace will be with you always. Take care. Bye-bye.